On the third day of my service trip to the University of Iowa Children's Hospital, our child life specialist pulled me aside and said, Quincy, would you mind going to the burn unit? I think that my face showed a little too plainly the emotions I felt about that. I'm not someone who is a medical person at all. I'm not pre-med for a reason. But our child life specialist comforted me and she said, don't worry. There's just a little girl up there that really needs someone to play with. Her name is Aaliyah, and you'll know her when you see her. So I made the trek up to the eighth floor of the children's hospital, and I did know her when I saw her. She was riding up and down the hallways in a little cart covered in balloons and stickers. She had two lime green full leg casts. And one thing that really caught my eye was that her arms were covered in temporary tattoos. There was Dora the Explorer, there was Phineas and Ferb, there were unicorns. Uh, there was not much space left on those little arms. So I had to ask her, I'm like, Aaliyah, where'd you get all those cool tattoos? And she said, every time I take a step, I get a tattoo. This little girl had, hadn't even started grade school yet, and she was learning to walk for the second time. So shortly afterwards, her nurse came up to me and asked me, Quincy, would you mind helping me? Aaliyah needs to walk a little bit today. So I got to stand next to her and hold her hand as she took some of her first steps in a few months down the hallway. She was in a lot of pain, she was crying, but then she got her temporary tattoo. She picked Phineas from Phineas and Ferb. I think it was her third one <laughs> on her arm. There was another little boy during our week that really made an impact on our service as well. We met him our first night at the Ronald McDonald House, and he asked us to help him build a train set. We could never do it quite right, but that's okay. We said bye to him. We knew we'd seen him at the hospital that day, but we didn't think much of it until the next morning. The next morning, we walked into 2JCP, the pediatric unit, and all of a sudden we heard, guys, guys, come play with me, come play with me. Let's play tag. And there was little Hayden running after us and grabbing our hands. This became the chorus every morning that we walked into 2JCP. He would grab Ian's hand, his favorite volunteer, and drag him to the playroom, or chase him up and down the hallways playing tag. Once he got to the playroom, he would grab every single toy. He dumped out boxes of Legos, and he would touch every single piece. I don't know if we ever actually built anything. He was more of a destroyer. Um, <laughs> But that's OK. I think he knew we had to clean every piece by hand as well. He really liked to give us some work to do. But his mom was grateful for the relief. And we got to know her a lot better throughout the week as well. One day, his mom sat down with me and just started opening up. She revealed to me that they had just escaped a life of domestic violence just before Aiden's little brother was born. That's the reason they were there. His little brother was born prematurely. And when he left the hospital, they didn't have a place to go. They were technically homeless. And to top it all off, they were talking to a social worker because they had no health insurance. This little baby had not even left his hospital room. And he was already caught in a cycle of poverty. Now, when we think of children's hospitals, we think of children in scrubs and laying in beds and maybe running a toy drive. But no amount of toys would give this child a home. Now, that's not to say that toy drives and Band-Aids aren't good things. These really help the kids, and they make them feel a lot better. They give them a lot of hope. But really, Band-Aids are just the beginning of the conversation. After you give someone, to, someone a toy, it's important to sit down and listen to them. You can't really know service until you're walking with them and hearing their stories. Thank you.